When you leave this world, what will you be remembered for? Now that is a very deep and thought-provoking question, which I've asked myself for many years, and it's been very difficult, challenging, and even to the point where I've gone on multiple journeys around the world to try and discover, try and understand what that exactly means for me. Now, I want you to ask yourself that exact same question. When you leave this world, what will you be remembered for? And the reason is that because we are all living in a society, all living in a world where we are often unaware of our own skills, our own talent, our own abilities, that we forget to truly live and to be one day remembered for who we were and what we've achieved. And it's not necessarily about leaving behind a legacy. It's about doing something that adds value to not just you, but to the immediate society around you who could benefit from the skills, from the asset, from the qualities, and from the knowledge in which you hold. And you see, I went on a journey around the world to inspire a million people not so long ago. I traveled to 31 different countries to try and understand exactly what that meant for me. But if I was to tell you that the journey of understanding when I leave this world, what will I be remembered for, what that actually means for me, it took a journey of self-discovery to understand who I am, where that level of belief comes from, that passion, that motivation, that determination to want to go on this journey. And I want to tell you a very quick story, a story that is built up on four key pillars, inspiration, knowledge, opportunity, and growth. The fundamental four pillars, which I personally believe is for self-development. Now, when I look at inspiration, one of the key things that hit me very young was that I wanted to do something outside of the norm of what society expected a young person to do. I was still in school at that time. And there was a key thing that really struck me that I was being born and raised in a very deprived community. In a very deprived community where a lot of people would often not see outside of university education, outside of a normal job, might even not even get employed. And that was a very challenging upbringing. For example, my parents, who actually did not work. They struggled to work, they didn't have the qualifications, and they found it very difficult to find jobs. So living off state benefits for a lot of the years growing up in childhood, I wanted to see and believe and think that I could live a life that is different. That I don't have to go through that exact same struggle, that exact same pressures that my parents faced. And that was a key challenge, to think differently, to think in that sort of mindset being an eight, nine year old growing up. And when you have that mentality, and it's an important mentality to have to want to want to be different, to want to be that individual who can actually look beyond the barriers, the struggles that somebody faces. And inspiration plays a key, a vital factor. Because when you're thinking about inspiration, when you're thinking about qualities in which an individual has, you need to look up to somebody. And you see the world is so flooded with social media, celebrities, influencers, all of these individuals. And sometimes you look at somebody who's got a million subscribers or somebody who's a, a multi-millionaire celebrity who's done so many things and we're looking up, scaling ourselves up so high that we find it very difficult to look and think, oh, I can be like them. And we often forget that the foundations of who we are, where we want to go is sometimes one step ahead of us. You take it one small step at a time. So for me, the one of the foundational elements was looking up to somebody who was a little older than myself, who was a little one step ahead of me. And my cousin was a great inspiration. Now he set up his own business at the age of 14. And for me, that was like a big, big change. Like, wow, a 14 year old sets up his own business. I want to do the same because I had that mindset that I needed some form of motivation, inspiration to want to be different. And it was a big le lesson, a big learning lesson that I didn't know what work was. I didn't know what it meant. I got fired after two weeks working for him. But the lesson I want you to take away from this first pillar of, of inspiration is that sometimes to have to want to learn about who you are, what you wish to accomplish in life, you have to go through the challenges. You have to face rejections. You have to face barriers in life that help you unveil new forms of learning. And this is where pillar two comes in, knowledge. Now, I want to tell you this story about getting into my writing my first book. I wrote my first book at the age of 17. And it was a book to try and inspire young people that no matter the age, race, religion, culture, everyone can develop an entrepreneurial mindset that we can think different, we can be different, we can act different when we choose to make these decisions ourselves. And when we have the support network around us to can buy into the vision. 
And I was 17 at the time when I wrote this. And I approached 40 different publishers and I got rejected by each and every one of those 40 publishers. Why? For two reasons. One, because I was 17 at the time. They thought 17 year olds shouldn't even write a book. And the other reason was the fact that they thought I didn't have a market for this book, that there was no business behind it. It wouldn't sell. And that was a major challenge, a major difficulty. And to want to capture knowledge, like writing a book in itself is quite a daunting experience to actually bring in knowledge that the very limited knowledge that I had and to try and put it away. Now, why I went into writing a book, because I saw a need that young people were starting to question. Hey, Sabiru, you got into business at the age of 40, you're working for your cousin, you got fired, I ran my own business. How'd you do that? How'd you actually do that? And why cannot we not do the same? So these questions were constantly were filtering down within my community and I felt that there was a need to help them. But the publishers did not see a market for that book. So I designed the book myself, edited the book myself, marketed the book myself and self-published it. So I didn't understand what copyright was. I didn't understand what have, when you're ever using an image that you needed permission for that image. I just put it all together, mishmash, and I had a, a, a book in my hand at the age of 17. And I learned a big lesson there that to be able to use elements, to be able to use resources, I needed their permission. Okay, a big lesson. I learned that and I take that on board for my next form of writing. But what happened was this rejection I faced from 40 publishers to then go on to prove myself that I am worthy, that I do have the capacity to bring a book to my hand and to inspire other young people that they could achieve the same, they could achieve their dream, they could turn their vision into reality. That is possible. And so it happened that when you're going on a journey of self-discovery, you not only feel motivated to want to make a form of change along the way, not only do you want to break the barriers, break the matrix that the stereotype in which society presents you, but what you also want to do is gain that from that inspiration. What builds you up, that self-belief, where it comes from is somebody who can inspire you, motivate you. I want to be like them. I want to do something. I want to take an element of their skill set and I want to make, make it my own. And then when you have it in that second element of education, knowledge, the second pillar, you learn by doing. And this is exactly what entrepreneurship is all about. This is what self-development is all about because we are far too driven by the idea that everything is theoretical. We go to school, college, university, get our degrees, and then we put everything into practice. But when you do it the flip side, why not learn by doing? See, I got into writing. I didn't know anything about writing. I didn't know anything about publishing. But I got into these elements simply by doing it. You know, making these mistakes, didn't know what copyright was, didn't know what did I need, need, that I needed to edit my book. There were so many mistakes in my book in terms of grammatical mistakes, errors, but that didn't stop me because that burning desire that you have inside you is what creates that opportunity to want to learn, improve, develop and grow. And that leads to the, the third pillar, opportunity. Now, when you think about writing, when you think about writing a book or make, wanting to discover on going on a, a journey of self-discovery, inspiration knowledge can take you to a certain distance. You gain that knowledge, you know how to do things, but when you want to actually capture opportunity, I had a book in my hand and I wanted to get it out into the hands of young people. And I saw that there was an opportunity there that to be able to speak like this, go onto a stage, go in, in, speak in front of 250 people, 300 people, schools, colleges, universities across the UK, UK, if not even around the world and say this similar sort of message and say that everybody has the ability to become extraordinary, no matter who you are, where you're from or whatever age you are, everybody has the ability to be extraordinary if and only you do something unique and different which you were not expected to do. And I think age plays a critical factor and this is a message especially to the young. If you're a young person listening in, you hold a substantial advantage doing something that different outside the norm of what society expects you to do when you're young because it's not expected of you. When you hit the age of 30, 35, 40, it's more expected. So it's much more difficult but it's not to say it's impossible because there is no no right or wrong in when you start. But the whole point is, if you're a young person listening, you wanna start early because then you break the norm, you break the stereotype and it's actually a lot easier. So one of the key things that I learned in terms of opportunity that having becoming this passionate individual who likes to share a message, who likes to share that it is all possible, that I went and delivered talks across the United Kingdom, around the world, set up the Inspire One Million campaign, became a professional speaker. I saw opportunity there. 
And then that's what I see. So everything you look at in the, in the span of my, my, my lifetime, I got fired by my cousin. I saw an opportunity to want to work for him. I got fired straight away. I ran my own business at the age of 14 to prove him wrong. It got me into writing a book to inspire other people that they could do the same. The book got me into professional speaking. Now, all of these happened step by step. If I take one element out of that, the entire sort of uh, the, the, the journey collapses. So you see the journey of self-discovery. There are so many pieces in your timeline that play a significant role. And when this question struck me, when you leave this world, what will you be remembered for? It is not a form of change because change, anybody and everybody say, I want to change the world. They grow up and say, I want to change the world. I want to do something that will change the world. Now, change in itself is a, is a big, big word. The reason being is ch no change happens overnight. It is you plant a seed and then you progress over time. And then over time, things happen that lead to that change. So it is about that having that important to create these sort of snowball effects that make this bigger and bigger and bigger so that you're able to fulfill a journey, fulfill a dream, fulfill and create a legacy that can one day inspire others. When you look back into the timeline of, of self-development, inspiration, knowledge, opportunity, and then growth, we often evade the element of growth in our self-development purely on the basis that we felt inspired, we feel motivated, we know how to do things and we think that this is it and then we go into the element of learning by doing and putting it all into practice, creating that opportunity, hey, we made a few bucks here and there and that's it. That's, that's our life and, and that's our way of doing it. and then we try and continue these repeat, three, repeat these three cycles. And that becomes a very challenging, very difficult momentum if you, if you don't focus on the element of growth. Now, when it comes to self-development, growth is so important, especially in, with an entrepreneurial mindset, that it's all about the support network around you, the bubble that you create around you who are able to continue to push you, hold you, accountable for the actions you take to be able to fulfill that vision that can one day answer the question when you leave this world what will you be remembered for and to create some form of change because change in itself is not something that happens overnight it is something that actually takes a long term to a long time to actually put into practice you have an idea a theory uh, or an insight into the change you want to create but you plant a seed and the actions you take along the way create this snowball effect that one day leads to this change and that timeline that timeline in which you create is so important and that in itself is what can one day answer that question when you leave this world what will you be remembered for but when you're thinking about growth as a whole, I encourage people who, who want to have any form of career success, any form of knowledge in terms of what they wish to do and, and the legacy they wish to leave behind is to have a support network who can actually feed in new ideas, new form of learning, new form of doing and, and actually keep them accountable in their practices to be able to make things happen. It's one thing that helped me with my publishing uh, with a new book coming out later uh, this year in, in December called Build Your Confidence on Stage. Without the support network, I wouldn't have had the idea uh, to one day have be planted an opportunity or be told and here's an opportunity to write a book on, on a specific topic and you go about and, and doing it because without that support network they often it's very challenging very difficult to be able to put into practice certain ideas and implement and implement them uh, so over the course of my journey I think the whole life experience if I take one element of my life away it almost the timeline almost collapses so appreciate what you do appreciate who you are but build that self-belief that character create that that person that you want to be and ultimately you will be able to live a life that is worth the time worth the value and you feel proud of who you are because you've actually left behind a footprint that can one day inspire and empower others so I hope I've inspired you all to bring the world at your feet Thank you very much.